Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a dolphin jumping out of the water in uh, sunset. So it'll be kind of an ocean seascape and I'm gonna keep it super simple so that uh, any beginner can do it. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's gonna be man and chat for our live show. So if you've got questions, you can ask those while I'm painting and I'll try to answer them. So let's get started. Alright, so this is uh, my reference photo and um, we're going to scale it up a little bit for our larger canvas. This is a 12 inch by 12 inch canvas, but if you wanted to do just like a, a rectangular canvas, you could definitely cut off parts of this, you know, up, up here or down here or both to um, put it on a rectangle canvas if you don't have the square one. So no problem with that. Um, this is the Pro Mixed Media Plain Board plain air paint board by Fredericks. They're our canvas sponsor, so thank you to them. Uh, these are nice, like, smooth texture, super smooth, so it'll be really easy to work on. Um, I've got my brushes tonight are going to be the 8 Filbert, the number 4 Filbert, and you could sw substitute flat brushes for those if you don't have the those sizes in the Filbert. Those are just kind of rounded tip brushes. And then I've got a couple of round brushes. These are number two and number two ought in case we need any like details, maybe on the dolphin. Um, and then I've got a number ang a quarter inch angle shader. This is the velvet touch line. These green handled, long handled ones are our 6100 series of Princeton. These are the Princeton velvet touch uh, series. And then this one is the Princeton select series. This is the fan brush, 10 ought fan brush. So Princeton is our brush sponsor and thank you to them for providing our brushes tonight. Let's go over our paint colors really quick. We've got unbleached titanium, titanium white, quinacridone magenta, cadmium yellow medium, uh, Indian yellow hue. Uh, let me see. Thalo blue green shade, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and burnt umber. I had a brain fart there. Oh, Sorry. almost. <laughs> no, almost so close. If you don't have this uh, uh, Indian yellow hue, you could just use kind of an orange color and uh, add some yellow to it. It's just a golden yellow, so it doesn't have to be these exact colors, but just something similar. Let's get going here. I'm going to grab my filbert. This is the large number eight filbert. This probably need a little bit bigger brush, actually, for the background now that I'm looking at it. Might bring... Let me grab my number 12 bright just to start us out with the blue because we've got a large area of blue to kind of cover at the top. So I'm going to start out with the ultramarine blue. This sky is really vivid, so I'm just going to go ahead and do straight color. Don't do that very often, but it is quite bright in this picture. So I'm just going to go ahead and go straight across with the ultramarine blue side to side. Pick up a little bit of water and then grab some of that phthalo blue and go right up underneath it with that new color and just blend up into the ultramarine. So when you're adding a new color, you kind of go just underneath with it, grabbing a little bit more phthalo blue. So I'm gonna go just underneath where I've already put it. So the thickest color is right here. And then most of that paint's off my brush now. And then I'm gonna blend it up into that wet paint and it'll smooth right out. That's kind of the trick of blending these acrylics. And we want to just kind of go side to side. So if we have any streaks, it'll kind of look like we meant to do that. It'll be part of our composition. I'm gonna grab some white now, a little bit more phthalo blue. And I'm gonna do the same thing down here. Just new color right there and blend up into the wet paint that's just above, side to side. And if you don't have enough to kind of go all the way across, uh, you may have to add a little bit of water. You can kind of load your brush a little bit more thickly with paint. And really, our horizon line is down here. I'm going way too down, way too far down with our blue. Sorry, I got a little happy with the blue there. Let's just stop right there. <laughs> Grab some white. Hold I don't those know what I'm doing. I'm just right talking now. about blending and. It would just blend Not the whole palette. Paying attention. So we'll put some white down here and kind of work it up into 
So I'm guessing erasers don't work in this case. No, but it's fine. It's not a big deal. That's funny. I'm just going along. Didn't even, not even paying attention. I'm almost at the bottom of the canvas. Like, all right. So now I'm going to work in some white. Uh, make sure that this is wet. If it's not, if it's starting to dry, just let it dry completely. And you can still do this over the top. You may um, have to add a little bit of blue to your white. Um, or, you know, a little bit blue down before you kind of do the white streaks over the top. Maybe just use a little bit less paint in your brush to get this kind of streakiness happening. But we're just kind of trying to do these kind of diagonal clouds that are happening up here. In this upper part. And this is kind of the area right under behind our dolphin. So we want it to be fairly light because we want to have him have a good silhouette for his dark color. You know, if, it, if we have two, like against this blue, this bright blue here, it wouldn't be as obvious. So we want, we do want to have a fairly light color under here. And that way we can get that on there. So we have a schedule change. Um, I, I, changed my um, video next week. We're not going to have any videos. So if you watch our live shows, um, we will not have a Tuesday or a Saturday video next week. We will have uh, a video this this Saturday, but not not the uh, Saturday the, the 13th. The Saturday the 13th, our son Jordan is getting married. So what? Courtney and I, his fiance, went out and looked at wedding dresses today. So that was fun. <laughs> so maybe you could paint during the ceremony. <laughs> yeah. no? I don't think so. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> All right. I'm grabbing kind of face. thick paint here and I'm just tapping over and the, this is still kind of wet underneath. So it's, it is kind of grabbing that paint and blending it just a little bit. But I'm just kind of, kind of doing these sort of diag diagonal meandering clouds. Um, I haven't even switched. I was going to do this part with the filbert, but this brush is still working for me. So I'm going to just keep on using it until I, it doesn't work anymore. Just kind of trying to keep this, these, um, clouds sort of horizontal ish. You know, they're kind of at a little bit of a diagonal in this picture, but, um, they're still kind of doing this sort of side to side. They're sort of flat and, uh, layered clouds here so what brush was that this is the number 12 bright it wasn't on my list so i'm gonna have to add it say, to my list. i don't have that. well i decided i wanted something bigger because this background was there's such a big area back here that to cover i just figured it'd be easier uh to do it with the bigger brush sorry guys okay so i've got the unbleached titanium here we're gonna transition to the yellows down here so i'm gonna use this unbleached titanium because it's got a little bit of a golden tone to it it's a little bit more of a, a warmer uh, you know white and that will kind of help transition our sky color into this kind of yellows without turning that blue to like green we don't want it to look green down here we don't want our sky to be it's not like tornado sky <laughs> so chat would like to know is that the reason why you've been painting girls in white dresses and fields lately? <laughs> <laughs> maybe subliminally subliminally <laughs> subliminally i swear i haven't been drinking today <laughs> i don't know how to spell that <laughs> yeah that's i i hadn't really thought of it but that could very well be true <laughs> We're really excited for him. He's our middle son, the one that's been in the army. So kind of had to put it together at the last minute because he's been working in Mississippi. So we're like yep. trying to get it all. It's been an interesting week. but New been, jobs. Oh, yeah. New ways. job and, yep, everything. So it's going to be fun. Moving, all the exciting stuff. Oh, yeah. I'm glad it's not me. Yeah. I know. We've been there, done that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it's not you either. Being married. <laughs> <laughs> so if somebody asked if there was a 
a substitute for unbleached titanium. And according to my notes here, since we get the question sometimes, it is yellow oxide with white and a touch of burnt umber. Yes. Angela remembers that, and I have to have a little sticky note here. Good so. job. Okay, I'm going with a very light white. I'm going to wipe most of that off of my towel and um, just put it up here. and try. I've switched to that number eight filbert now, so a little bit smaller. This is dry now, so I'm kind of just dry brushing this color on up here. And I'm trying not to get like a starting and stopping point. If I kind of start in the middle, sort of, and just flick it out, you can get kind of a wispy looking end to it. Okay, there we go. This is wet here, so it's picking up the color. So let me go in with even thicker paint. I'm gonna go just underneath where we've done the other clouds and kind of add some of this. There's a little bit of gray in here too, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab that ultramarine blue. You said a little that? bit of burnt oh, sorry. umber. Go ahead, what? That was the number eight filbert you said? Yes, number eight filbert. I got a button for that. And then, oh, nice. And I'm going to grab some of that sky color so this is, doesn't look like too out there because, you know, we don't want it to look like a totally different color we want in the same color family. I think that's pretty good. I want to keep it fairly light, so I'm going to grab some more white here. It doesn't have to be super dark, but we want to kind of add a little bit of that kind of gray to our clouds just above right here and then we'll start kind of adding it down here as well and we need to get some yellow down here so before I go too much farther I'm gonna go ahead and put that yellow in this is almost it's still wet so it should blend okay clean that out really well we don't want any blue in this brush so make sure if you need to you can really rinse it out all the way Grab some of the Indian yellow and some white. And you can see how vibrant that color is. Uh, it looks darker than it is. Once you can add a little bit of white to it, it really goes bright. I'm gonna add just a touch of burnt sienna to tone it down just slightly, just to kind of warm it up. Okay, there we go. Let's use that down here, right along our water line. Go grab some white. Okay, there we go. This is working pretty good. It's really dark over on this side. I'm going to go ahead and put this color down first, but I will have to add a little bit of dark color to it. And this paint is starting to dry, so it's getting kind of grabby, like I can feel it kind of dragging on my brush. So I don't want to do too much more. I'm going to grab some of the quinacridone magenta and a little bit more of that burnt sienna to create a darker color for over here. Once it gets kind of sticky, it'll it means it's kind of dry, starting to dry. So if we mess with it too much when it's starting to get sticky and dry, um, we can end up with uh, lifting happening on our canvas. With acrylics, they kind of uh, start to bond and grab one another as they dry. So I'm going to use a little bit of white here and just kind of tap in over the top and try not to blend too much over that blue so that it doesn't mix in and make this a weird color. We're just kind of trying to... There we go. We got a question. We really should have left a little bit of this white. I wasn't even thinking. I don't know what I'm doing today. <laughs> so, got a question. Got a wedding brain. Go ahead. Um, do you know about how long would it be safe to leave your brushes in the water? In um, a, maybe a couple minutes? Because I know you've split some handles. Yeah, like 15 minutes, maybe half an hour at the most. But, yeah. Because the water than, does absorb into the wood. Yes, it does. So, not not very long. All right, so just tapping this time, just to kind of tap some color. 
Tapping will just kind of keep your clouds a little bit fluffier. We want them to be sort of soft around the edges, so that's what will make your clouds look a little bit, I don't know, more realistic and kind of prettier. All right, I'm going to let that set, and we need to add some white over here for our sunset color, our sky, our sun. Forgot to add white. So while you slow down and come up for a breath, yes. I'll say hi to everybody. Good, thank you. Welcome to everybody tonight, and we've got a few people in chat say this is the first time they're catching you live. Oh, and nice. Some that are new to your channel, so a special welcome to you guys. Yeah, thank and you for joining us. We have several of the unusual suspects also here. Hi. Coming in for their Tuesday night fix. <laughs> so welcome. And uh, if you're new to the channel, you know, hit the subscribe button. Check out all the 300 plus videos Angela has and all the different painting levels, beginner, kids, advanced, all that good stuff. So I don't think you'll be disappointed. I'm just you're trying not. to figure out how she's going to work a flower into this painting. <laughs> Oh, I was in heaven yesterday. We went and looked at flowers at the florist. And, oh, they had delphiniums, which is like my favorite blue color flower. So pretty. I need to do a painting of delphiniums now, I think. Okay, so <laughs> this is a really bad because <laughs> I did not put the sun in <laughs> when I should have. So <laughs> it's going to be hard to get in blended in. Sorry. <laughs> put, <laughs> put the sun in first. <laughs> <laughs> kind of work around him with your blue. Don't bring your blue that far down. We, you don't want it to try to cover up the blue like I'm doing here. I probably could wipe it off my canvas, but I'm afraid it'll just cause more problems than it'll help. So I'm going to try to blend out the edge <laughs> just a little bit, but this is, it's going to look pretty, pretty wonky at first. Uh, it's funny. <laughs> 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 do you know what you're doing? I do, I do. Okay, Surprisingly, right. I've been painting for quite a while. Right. I know better than this, so <laughs> I think we'll make it work. <laughs> I'm just going to put some clouds around it. <laughs> I did. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> it looks like the moon is coming up. It does. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> nothing is set in stone with acrylics. No, nothing can... to see here. <laughs> Why don't everybody go get a drink or something? <laughs> I'll fix it. We'll be back. Come back and it'll be fine. <laughs> All right. So adding more of these clouds. Here, this is that yellow color. So we're going we're going a little bit more like golden. We're catching some of that golden light. And I'm actually going to put a little bit of this underneath our clouds up here too. Just because if I tap straight down, I'll even get like kind of broken up. Almost like you'd get it with a stippling brush. You can kind of do that with pretty much any flat brush. You can get kind of some stipples with it if you just sort of tap with it. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to kind of hold it at an angle a little bit and tap a little bit side to side. We could even use a Deerfoot stippler if you have one. Um, that would look good here. I'm going to just kind of do some wispy stuff over here. And hopefully this will start drying soon. We may have to have you uh, blow dry this for me, hun, so that we can get some. I think I can do that, and everybody was, you know, give them a good chance to see Stickman, and no, I haven't done a new one. I don't know where so, I'm going to fit a dolphin. Well, I don't know if we can fit a dolphin in there. I'm going to see. I'm going to have to do a Stickman on my channel. When you Somebody asked me the other day if you had a channel. Yeah, I do. There's a, I have zero videos posted. <laughs> Well, technically, anybody who's making comments on YouTube has a channel. <laughs> Correct. So Everybody has a channel. Yeah. They just may not have videos on their channel. And I have a whole 64 subs. I want to know who those people are. They're, what they're waiting. They're the, they're they're, the diehard. Hopefully, they click fans. the bell so they know when I go live to do a stick man. Because <laughs> it's going to be like 30 seconds. <laughs> and a million and views later. It. <laughs> it's going to go viral. All right, going side to side here. I've got this kind of yellow color still in my brush, so I'm just kind of still adding more of the lighter clouds in here in the middle. And 
transitioning between the dark clouds down here and the big white blob right there. <laughs> All right, let's let's put in our water, get that going. At be, least this part down here looks bright. Looks right. The colors are pretty good right down it here. Could be so some foreign planet. It could be. Yeah. I don't know. What was that planet with all the blue people? I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. It was a big hit years ago. Somebody on chat will remember. Everybody was blue. The planet with the blue people? Yeah, not blue. Oh, a Avatar? Yeah. Oh. Maybe it's a planet like that. Okay. Well, I'm going to try not to press down too hard because I don't want that. But I do want to have a straight line here for my... Uh, ocean, and let's see what color we want to use. Um, it's fairly light, so I'm going to grab the ultramarine and maybe some of this burnt sienna color. Yeah, that looks good. That's pretty. Kind of a purpley, almost kind of a purpley brown. And we'll do some white. A little bit more blue. There we go. There we go. We'll use a little bit of this color up in our sky too, so that it kind of all matches, but that'll be a good color for our ocean. And I'm just gonna go straight across. I've got a ruler here. This is a good trick. If you don't have a ruler like this, you could use tape. Just make sure you have a perfectly straight line for your water. You always want your water horizon line to be straight. So what are all those lines and numbers on that thing that you're using? <sighs> Look what I did. <sighs> oh, you want me to zoom in on that? No. <laughs> I'm having all kinds of issues tonight. I walked in literally like 30 minutes before yeah. the show, so. So, since the sun is the most thing in the furthest background, we should have put that in first. Probably. I'm just going to... You don't want the... Anytime you get, like, a texture like that, because it kind of pulled that paint up and did a texture on it, um, you're going to want to make, make sure that you smooth that out, because you don't want it to dry textured, because acrylics are basically like plastic. So, if you have a texture on there... It's going to show through no matter how many layers you put on top of it. It's going to have this, you know, raised textured area. So if you don't want that to dry that way, which we didn't, uh, then we need to just smooth that out. Okay, I need you to dry that really badly. But, well, let me go ahead and put all of this this ocean down. Let me get a little bit more blue and do keep on going down here. Let's get a whole layer of ocean on here before we dry it. A little bit of that. And and our water is actually gonna have this white, so I'm gonna go ahead and kinda put a little bit of white here in the middle area. And then do this blue kind of around the sides. We'll make it more obvious, obviously, you know, as we put our other layers on top. But for now, we just want to kind of get the color on there so it can dry. And we can put our other layers on top of it. It's kind of a medium gray color, gray-blue sort of. Not super dark here. And we'll put some dark uh, areas and we'll put some highlights in there too. So we'll kind of put... We're just kind of going medium, uh, doing a medium colored base, medium value base, and then we'll put light colors on top and dark colors on top. So it'll all kind of come together at the very end. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm gonna let you dry that. I'm And it's probably going to take a little longer because it's one of those paint boards, so it doesn't have, like, it doesn't, okay, make sure it doesn't do too hot if you can do a light, uh, like a cool, okay. cool iron almost. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, 
this is Stick Man. He's <laughs> Mark's creation. I don't know what we're going to do on here. I don't think we can really fit a whole lot on here. Um, yeah, let's see. We can maybe do a little, little teeny tiny dolphin somewhere. Grab some of that ultramarine blue. Maybe put the dolphin over here by the octopus jumping out of the water. So he's got kind of a roundish body. The tail kind of does this sort of heart shape almost sort of like upside down. Whoops. This way. Something like that. There we go. We've got a little fin coming out this way. And a little fin this way. There we go. Alright, so there's our little dolphin. He's talking to the to the octopus that doesn't look much like an octopus, but that's what that is supposed to be. This is just our little fun way of filling time while Mark's drying. <laughs> Mark creates these stick man. This is his contribution to the art on the channel. And we just kind of add something that kind of goes along with whatever we've been painting that day. So anyhow, so when we start to do the, um, the dolphin, we want to get our sky and everything completely done. Uh, and then what we're going to do is kind of put these, um, put these darker shadow areas in our water and then uh, add little highlights to them. And that way it'll give kind of our water droplets a little bit of depth. You can notice every single, I don't know if you can see that, but um, if you zoom it right in, like every single one of these little droplets has like a shadow underneath it and so that'll kind of help uh, give us and you can definitely see it through there you can see these darker streaks through these white areas so um, we will we'll be doing that here in a minute so it's going to take a little bit longer with that paint board because it's going to oh, I hear it stopped Not too bad. Thank so you, hun. A little tacky. Little, okay. Is that okay? Yeah, that'll, uh, I think so. I think so. I can keep going. Nope, that's fine. Right. We'll make it work. I don't know how long you wanted me to be out there. Uh, yeah, well, we were, I was stretching it. <laughs> <laughs> were you doing like shadow puppets and stuff? I was about to. I was getting there. <laughs> <laughs> brushes talking to each other yeah oh my he did he's see you on the show last there. night oh my was a star oh. we're gonna do fire where are you <laughs> <laughs> oh we're going crazy <laughs> okay there we go yeah well, we're getting that white on there it's coming covering okay and we we don't want it like to be pure white so i'm gonna get some yellow in there and do some of the yellow around the edges a little bit that's the only part that we want really pure white is just kind of like right in there. I cannot believe I covered all of that with blue. That was just dumb. Do not do that so you don't have to do this and layer it the way I've been doing. Well, we Much easier, easier if you just start with white right there. <laughs> Much easier. We intentionally did that you know, to show you how to recover from something. There you go. We, we meant to do that. Yeah, yeah. We. It was part of the script. Exactly. Okay, so going with some really bright color here and gonna just tap in for more highlights on here around here. These are really bright clouds that kind of come off the sides here. Now we're good. Now, once we get that white in there, then we can kind of encroach on it. We're not going to leave it this big round circle, obviously, but uh, we needed the white to start with so that we could 
add our other colors. So I'm going to try to get some of this that was our sky color over here. And pick up a little bit of that um, blue from our water. That was the burnt sienna color and ultramarine. And we're just going to make a kind of gray color. If it's turning too green, you can add a little bit more of the burnt sienna to it to tone it down. And we're going to go in here. There we go. And add this color. right up into our sun, but try not to come over it too much. And if you do go over it, then you can grab a little bit of your yellow gold sun color there and just kind of tap over it. But we kind of want to get a little bit of this color going on around the sides of our sun to kind of pull in sun a little bit. Okay, let me grab a little bit of that ultramarine blue, get some of that blue color, do some of that down here. Just kind of tapping in using the edge of this filbert brush. And the filbert kind of gives your, um, give your your clouds kind of that rounded feel so it's it's um, kind of helping to keep it uh, kind of rounded uh, using a flat brush you could do it too but you know just be a little bit more careful with the flat because it can tend to kind of look a little bit uh, more edgy so you, you know kind of use the corner push smush down the corner of it so it's not leaving you square edges. Okay. There we go. And I just picked up some of that yellow, so it's got it's got a little little bit little tiny bit of green. It's not like green though. It's it's definitely let's grab a little bit of more of that yellow Indian yellow with the white. Tap that in over the sides here on this closer to the middle of that sun, so it's kind of catching more of that gold color. You can see the clouds are kind of coming up in front of that sun. And it's peeking through, you know, where it's super bright, the cloud, even if there's clouds there, we're not going to really be able to See, it's, it doesn't look like there's clouds going over the top all the way, but there might be some. Just, you know, this might be connecting, but the sun is so bright right there where, where it's kind of bleeding out over the edges of those clouds, so you can't really tell that they're there. All right, so that's looking better. We're, we're see, we made it. We, we have little faith over there. We pulled it out. It's starting to look better now. Kind of see what we're going for. A little more. Got a little bit more of this burnt sienna color. As we get over away from the sun, we're going to go darker with our clouds. So like over here, we went a little bit darker. Let's go ahead and put some of this burnt sienna over here. fairly dark so I'm going to go ahead and put those in fairly fairly dark we always lighten them up if we need to so don't be afraid of contrast that's what gives your painting depth grab some of that ultramarine blue mix that in with the colors that I've got on my brush here so we've got some of that it's this is almost the same color and if you look at our picture almost the same color there right where the sky and the water meet over here so I'm going to 
I'll turn this at an angle so it's just a little bit easier to do. And I'm going to kind of blend this in side to side. And if it goes over the edge, I'm just going to kind of wipe it off a little bit. But you can bring that blue color down pretty close to the waterline there. And then at the top, we're just going to kind of tap it off, blend it, maybe put a little bit of this color up in there. Just want to make sure that these edges um, are kind of a little bit sort of fuzzy soft. And just kind of tapping, doing these kind of circular tapping motions as you're brushing can help get that look. So if you're using one of these, you know, brushes like this, it can be a little bit trickier um, to get the fuzzier look. But, um, you know, if, you, if you're comfortable and you've done clouds with your Deerfoot stippler, you could use a brush like this. It's already kind of a stippling texture or a... Um, Thinking of. Or this one, the Willows Blender. I really don't know why I didn't grab that brush, actually. It's, I like using that for clouds. I just didn't think of it. Because I don't have a button for it. Yeah, and I didn't, I didn't put it on my list. I don't know why I didn't, but it's fine. All right, so now I just want to kind of blend these two colors together a little bit right here, and then we're pretty much good on this guy. You know, they're not doing a ton of detail on this guy on this one. So, uh... Let me get to working on the water a little bit. Are you using your number four filbert? I am. Did I switch without telling you? Probably did. I think you picked it up when I brought the painting back. Oh, sorry. And I didn't notice. I don't think I told you either, so... Well, I'm trying to pay attention. I'm trying to learn the brushes. Thank you. So I can use... My new tech toy. You mark. Got a little fancy thing that's got like fancy buttons. I. Yes. Yeah. A special thank you to the Patreon and Super Chat supporters that made it possible. Yes. Making his job a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. Adding some of this gold kind of around the outsides of these clouds. It'll do two things. It'll kind of tone it down and it'll kind of help blend it into. Um, the other um, colors that we've got going on. It'll kind of help transition between the, to the colors. Uh, let's see, this whole area has got lots of little, little, little bitty clouds happening. So I'm just going to kind of tap, tap, tap. You did a great job recovering on that sun. Oh, thanks. I'm serious. That looks great. Good. Thank you. Acrylics are pretty forgiving. They, they, you know, you can layer pretty, pretty well over in just about anything. So, okay, I'm going to keep on going here and add more white to this middle part. This, again, this is kind of where our dolphin's going to be right here. So I just want to make sure this is fairly light back here where he's going to be. There's lots of stuff going on. There's a little bit of gold back here too. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of that color some more white and add some more white up here again kind of just kind of dragging it side to side so it's picking up the texture of the canvas a little bit and that's pretty it's working out okay so let's transition right here so what we're going to do is grab some of that uh phthalo or uh burnt sienna and our this color was the Indian yellow mix those two together and we're just going to kind of go over the top of that blue and that blue so dark when I painted it on I kind of did this wispy thing kind of like what I've been doing so that I didn't have like a hard solid edge and then that way when I go over the top with this other color it's going to be so dark that blue is so dark that I can uh, it's still going to show even when I go over the top, you can see that, you know, so I'm just kind of dulling it down just a little bit. Still going to be fairly dark value. And I'm just kind of blending this color in and trying to transition between 
this super light golden color and the darker color there. So that's all you really need to do there. If you've, you know, if, if it's having trouble, you know, you've got one color that's not blending uh, very well or say like, you know, too much of the blue is showing, then you can add more of the burnt sienna. If too much of the burnt sienna is showing, you could add some of this yellow on this side, but always adding it to the area where you want the color to be the most vibrant and then blending it into the area where you want to soften the color. And that will help it not... I think the tendency is to go in straight for the area that you want to blend and that's a mistake when you're when you're adding a new color because then it won't blend. It'll just add too much of whatever color you've got on your brush. So let's add a little bit of white kind of this is obviously kind of gray and it's not pure white here but I'm just kind of adding a little bit of that around the sides of my sun area just a couple places there this is another uh, it's kind of the the ultramarine blue I'm just adding a little bit of that um, white gray color little bit over here and really there's a lot going on up here I'm gonna grab some of this burnt sienna and just kind of connect some of these clouds up here because there's a lot of this burnt sienna that's sort of in and amongst all of this there we go now isn't that amazing I love this part of painting because it's like it starts out to be a hot mess it looks like absolutely weird and terrible and you can start thinking you know you'll start psyching yourself out when you get like you know I did with the sun and you're just like oh my goodness this is terrible <laughs> like it'll look terrible it'll look uh like I don't think this is gonna work and then but if you just keep on with these layers and just kind of you know slowly build up your layers and slowly add your colors and just you know don't uh don't freak out just keep on you know working the painting eventually um you'll work out of that ugly stage and you'll it'll start to kind of make sense and you're like okay all right i see now we're we're you know we're getting somewhere so we're kind of at that stage now we're like okay we're and people commented on how they liked how you worked through that good and i thought it was great that you just laughed yeah i mean it's you know, funny i'm just like well i just added it. more time for myself it's not that i can't you know we can't fix anything it's just like well i just added another five minutes to the painting there you know yep. <laughs> like oh well <laughs> didn't need to do that but you know it's not the end of the world we definitely can work through it so <laughs> it is fixable a 99.9 percent .9 of everything on you know with acrylics is fixable it's just you know just kind of knowing what to do and also just kind of trusting the process because a lot of people would have done that and then they might have just said oh I got to paint over the whole thing and start over you know I see a lot of beginners doing that. Like they get really frustrated and they like get almost to the end of a painting and they only have like, you know, a couple more layers to do on it. And they're like, nope, I did it wrong. I got to start over and they'll, you know, paint over the whole thing. And I'm just like, oh, it always like feels so bad for them because I'm just like, you, you gave up too soon. Like, don't, you know, don't, don't, uh, don't give up in the ugly stage. That's, that's my advice. You know, don't, uh. Very rarely should you ever, ever have to gesso over a whole painting and start over from scratch. So I'm going to grab some more of this white. And now I'm just kind of gently kind of going over from the outside and adding some of that white on there. Just like we did over here with that black. But the white's not going to cover it completely. So we'll still be able to see these other colors bleeding through. But it'll just kind of like soften it and just make it look like it's, you know, kind of that sunset feeling. Okay. I don't want to spend too much more time on the sky here. Let's get to working on the water. I'm going to move down here. I'm going to grab just a teeny tiny bit of yellow. I'm going to use all the same colors that are in the sky down in the water. That's going to be, it's almost like a mirror down here. So just kind of remember that when you're working water. It's not, you know, there's really not, nothing magic. I think that the tendency is to think water blue. Like water blue, you know, like water equals blue. So we got to do blue. But it doesn't necessarily... Uh, it's not going to necessarily be blue. It's going to, you know, pick up the colors of your sky. So if your blue, if your sky's blue, then yeah, it'll it'll look blue. But if you've got all these yellows in your sky, then your water is going to be yellow. So 
So we're gonna just kind of follow the line. Actually, it's kind of going in a little bit of diagonal here. So we're gonna kind of add some of this yellow just to start with. And we'll add brighter white to it eventually, but I don't wanna go too bright too soon because I wanna get my shapes kind of, I'm kind of doing this zigzaggy thing. Um, there's some bright uh, waves that are kind of doing this sort of cupping motion right here. This is going to be our splash zone. So we're going to have a big kind of splash coming up this way. I'm not going to put it in yet, but it's going to be kind of like right in here. So it's going to be kind of coming out like this. So we'll know kind of where to put it. But it's, Actually, it's probably a little higher than that now that I'm just looking at it. It's not quite halfway, so it's it's like above the halfway mark. So that's actually too low. It's actually going to be up here. So let's grab some ultramarine and some of that burnt sienna. I'm gonna spray my palette down. How you doing, hun? I'm doing great. Good. No stress over here. Good. Got a good, like we got a good connection. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> you just, it's like I just got a kick out of you because you were just laughing and making me laugh. And it, was just, it was great. <laughs> I'm just thinking to myself, "Oh, what did I just do?" <laughs> I like saw that. I was like, "Oh my gosh!" I just, I just added all that work. So, would you just guy leave that white? <laughs> do not paint it blue down there. If you're gonna put a sun Please. in there. Just save, yourself. Spot. Just save yourself the hassle. Because that took three layers to cover that. I had to, you know, cover it three times to get it back to where it needed to be white. And really, it's not pure, pure white. It's it's like, you know, it's less slightly tinted yellow, just slightly. So, all right. So I'm kind of trying to figure out where that splash zone is. And so if I take the halfway mark, come just above it. There's a, like a dark shadow that happens right here. And then our splash zone is up in here. So I'm gonna, and then below it, it's all kind of just these sort of choppy waves and things. So I'm gonna, I've got too much of this lighter color on my brush still. It's tinting it, it's not dark enough. Let me clean my brush out here. Finish with the white. So, but I wanted to know where that splash is because it kind of interrupts the reflection of the sun. So it's going to be like, uh, I guess if you split this part into three parts, this part is here and then there's like a big splashy splash here, just a little bit of white underneath. And then there's another big kind of swell right here, like a separation right here. And then, and then more down here. So. Uh, let's see, there's a big kind of diagonal line that kind of comes this way out. And then there's a swell that kind of does this. Another one kind of underneath. And then these ones kind of do some, the, you know, the water is kind of doing all these kind of motions. Up in here, we're going to keep them fairly horizontal. And when they, the farther back they get, the less of these kind of uh, waves, ripples that you're going to see, because they're just too far away for your eye to perceive the, the depth, you know, where we're not going to see the ripples when they get farther. So right about here where that splash is, anything farther up above there, we're going to only barely have any kind of ripples. So like if we see any ripples, it'll be, you know, just the slightest little thing. And then up back here, it's going to be almost just like, like little dabs and dabs. They're almost purely horizontal. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this yellow color because there is some of this yellow up in here. This is our kind of, this isn't the brightest color that we're going to see in our water. So we'll add some more white in this area to really brighten it up. I'm just gonna kind of Scrub it side to side almost. Just going to dust that color. It's going to be darker over here. So as we get away from the light, it's obviously going to darken up. We're not going to see all the same colors up in here, down in here. So 
So do we wait until you start painting the dolphin to start speaking dolphin? It wasn't clear <laughs> before when we were talking about it on the show. We didn't we didn't get the chance to talk about that, what the etiquette was right. for dolphin speak. When exactly were we going to switch over to dolphin? <laughs> I didn't know you knew dolphin, so I, that was that's a surprise to me. That's news to me. I know well. You know well. <laughs> Hello. That's from uh, Dora, right? Dora. Yeah, Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo. There you go. The educational movies. That's how you learned it. Mm-hmm. Nice. I added burnt umber to burnt sienna, and we're gonna do. Our whirling wave and it's up in here right here it's kind of right across from that splash zone area right here start to add a little bit of this darker shadow in here where we're gonna have this splashy happening so we want it dark so we have enough contrast so when we do the white splashes and you know the lighter colored splashes we can't we've got to have some dark underneath or around it, you know, behind it, so that it'll show up. Otherwise, it's just gonna, there's gonna be no contrast. So it's gonna look really weird at first here. Let's add a little bit of blue to this to get a little bit of. That may be too teal. We'll see what it looks like over here. Mm, not too bad. All right, so back in here, tiny, tiny, little just dabs, just like we did here. Little short, choppy brush strokes. I'm going to try to straighten that out. There's actually some, like, mountains back here. So if you want to put those in, you can kind of use this uh, lighter. You can add maybe a little bit of a little bit of uh, quinacridone magenta to this color. It's kind of a brown, gray the quinacridone will kind of tint it a little bit, make it a little bit prettier. Wipe my brush off. We'll just put a little, if we want a little mountain thing there, we can kind of put that along our horizon line. Just a little indication. Just to keep it very faint. And I'm going to do it here because I've got a little bit of my paint color went over the top of my thing, so that'll uh, we can just fix it that way. We got a question. Go ahead. They would like to know, could they glaze the dark in? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You could. Yeah, I'll show you how to do that. Adding a little bit of white over this just to set those in. I don't know if I love the mountains there. I kind of don't love that, but. Mm, let me see if I can get that off there. I feel like it's just going to be like, what is that? So, I'm just going to compete with our our dolphin. All right, so let's use some of this color that's up in the sky. This is that kind of uh, brighter yellow color, and we'll kind of start adding some of that in a few places. intersecting, overlapping. Okay, 
still kind of looking a little weird, but you just got to keep on, we got to just keep on adding layers. That's the key. So I'm going to grab some of that ultramarine blue. I've got some of that brown color on there, and I'm going to add that ultramarine blue. It's going to really darken that up. Let's do it about along here where we did that brown before. I'm just going to add a little bit of that color. If you look really closely in our picture, there's all these kind of layers upon layers. If you like look in here, you can see there's all these kind of layers. There's little layers of red inside the other colors and blues and things. So it's not just like a solid color. We're seeing all these other colors happening and these are all the colors that are up in our sky. So we just kind of keep that in mind and just add anywhere we added this lighter color we can add a little bit of this darker just for like right underneath and it'll it'll add a little shadow to those dark areas so let's go in in here and add a little bit of it around our really bright sun even because there is some shadows that are kind of coming in in front of that water Small brush strokes. If you're if you're getting too thick of lines, you can just press your brush really flat right here. So if it's flat here, it'll be flat on your canvas. So keep, keep pressing it flat as you pick up paint. Because otherwise it can tend to like start to separate and then you could get thicker lines where you don't want thick lines. Okay, so let's do some of this darker color over here. Just starting to really add in some of these areas we want it really dark over here so we need to add a lot more dark but you can see how pretty that kind of gray blue we started with it looks really nice and I think I want to add some more blue up here I can see that it's kind of streaky so I think I might um, grab that ultramarine blue and even add a little bit of just a tiny bit of quinacridone magenta I'll make it even like a little bit of almost like purple. And I'll really darken it up up here too. So I'm just going to kind of go on the corners and sort of angle that in and make sure that those areas are really dark up there in those upper corners, just at the top of the canvas. And I don't have a lot of paint on my brush so that it's not going to, I don't have to worry about blending it down too far. And it's close enough to the color that I already have on there. So that I can kind of just dust it like we did this white and it'll kind of just catch the texture and blend in. And we can have that really bright, vivid blue up there. I'll put a little, and I mean a little bit of it down here because there's not a lot of this is really bright down here. This is really pretty dark. It's not getting a lot of, I'm not seeing a lot of color. So just in the corner over here, and maybe a little bit over here. Okay, so you went back to your big brush. Uh -huh, this is number 12. Okay, and I don't have that on my list, so okay. people just kind of pretend it's on there. Okay. And then could you remind us what brown did you use when you did the highlights and the waves? Uh, the, the This part? I'm, that was burnt sienna and burnt umber. Okay. Somebody asked, and yes. I've been waiting for, burnt for burnt you to come up for air, Sorry. so I could ask. <laughs> I know. I'm, you are in the zone. Well, I, it's it's one of those paintings that if we don't keep moving on it, it can take forever. So I don't I don't want to mm -hmm. try to keep it about an hour and a half tonight. So we we just got to keep on. Oh yeah, yeah, and, moving. Uh, and people are saying that you know once they get the water done, the painting could be done. You don't have absolutely. to have the dolphin. Oh know. yeah, absolutely. This is a great be techniques for just, water. Just with the sunset in the water, yeah. For sure. All right, so adding a little bit of um, burnt or uh, burnt sienna and quinacridone magenta. And we're going to use that down in here to give it kind of that pretty um, reddish, almost orangey color. Add a little bit on here. And a little bit around here to this area. I don't have 
to be a lot. We don't want to overpower it because there's not a lot of the red up in the clouds. And if we need to, we can add a little bit of this color. Um, I'm going to just glaze a little bit of this color up in here. Just to kind of give it a hint of that pink color. And it's actually in these clouds. I didn't put it in earlier, but I can see it now. Um, so there we go. So we need to kind of smooth the transition between our light areas and our dark areas. So I'm going to grab some white and our ocean color was ultramarine and burnt sienna. So I'm going to grab that little bit of burnt sienna with the ultramarine and then use a lot of white. So I want to go lighter than the original color that I had on there so maybe a little bit more white and I'm going to kind of go over the top of some of the dark areas that I've got now just kind of blend those the edge between the light and the dark just a little bit add a little bit of that color What you looking for, huh? What brush you were using? Oh, number four. Boom, got it right. Good job. This one reminds me a little bit of that whale tail one that we did. It's got it kind of the same sort of, you know, with the splash and everything. I don't know, just kind of reminds me a little bit of it. If you did the whale tail one, this would probably work with it. You can hang them side by side. A companion piece. That dolphin and the whale together. <laughs> okay. A little bit wet. I'm going a little bit wetter so that I don't want the, that dry brush look. I want it to be kind of smooth here, so add a little bit more water to my paint and just kind of there we go oh I was going to show how to glaze so glazing is basically just uh you know, creating a, a like a wash, like a see-through wash. Let me do a little bit of burnt umber with the ultramarine. Go get a really dark color here. It actually might not be dark enough. It may you may need to do. I mean, it's yeah, it's close. It'll probably probably get good enough. So I'm just going to kind of go in here with this wetter, watered down paint and that's going to, you'll be able to see the under layers through. Well, you know, it won't, it don't, doesn't cover solidly and it does kind of, especially on water, it's actually a nice effect. It's kind of what I was doing with the, what, uh, the previous layer with the lighter color, but it wasn't as watered down. It was a little bit, it had a lot of water in it, but it wasn't as watery as this so it works best if you have a, a transparent color you know cause transparent because you're using like um and if you've got glazing liquid you could use that as to help make your paints more transparent you know for this technique so go really dark along these sides here my highlights and kind of go underneath some of them add some shadow you 
and there's dark areas, right? Even amongst these lighter colors, you're going to have these dark areas coming right up to them. And if I do, I've, I've, you notice that the motion that I'm doing with my brush, I'm not like holding it and pulling. I'm, I'm kind of just holding in place and sort of scooting it side to side and letting it kind of do these sort of... Um, When I, when I, where I want it to blend and, you know, kind of create these choppy waves. Um, just kind of scooting it side to side like this. Kind of keep that almost like you're doing the motion of the ocean, you know, um, with your hand. So think about how those, that water just kind of rolls side to side. So we're kind of doing that with our hand as we're painting. We're kind of rolling it, rocking it side to side a little bit. And that'll keep that kind of... What are you laughing at? Oh, I switched over to hashtag side cam and it was blurry. Oh. <laughs> so I just gotta mm -hmm. get it set up so that it wasn't blurry. Thank you. Picking up a little bit more blue here. So I've got that same color on my brush, but I'm picking up a little bit more blue. I'm going to kind of go. So this is kind of a little bit, just slightly darker than what we were just doing with our glaze. It's a little bit kind of a transition color between that lighter ver lighter areas and the, the darker areas. to where we can add a little bit more of our bright, bright colors. Just want to we'll start kind of adding some of the lighter colors in now. Once you get it kind of dark enough, you can start adding uh, your highlights in. So I'm going to grab that white, but I'm going to tone it down just a little bit with the with that gray color. Add a little bit of water so that it's kind of a, almost a glazing. And to figure out where we want to catch the light the most. So we want to kind of go in and around our dark areas, go over the top of our dark areas. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow. Make sure it doesn't turn green. If it turns green, you can add a little bit of brown. burnt umber there. There's some of these times where it's kind of coming back on itself. I'm going to make some of that ultramarine and blue and burnt umber color. I'm seeing some dark area down in here that I missed. So I want to do that. It's like a kind of a zigzag right down here. Question mm -hmm. about magentas. Okay. Person would like to know, do you know if there's a difference between quinacridone magenta and permanent magenta? I'm trying to think if I have permanent magenta, what it looks like. I'll, I'll look it up. Okay. I'm not sure what that color looks like. I'm not familiar with it, so I'd have to tell, I'd have to see it. I'm wanting to say permanent magenta may be a uh, like a lighter version or um, some brands you know just have different names for 
their colors, but they're similar. If it was quinacridone, though, it would, it would say quinacridone because it's actually like a chemical like cobalt or, you know, uh, ultramarine or thalo. You know, it'll, it'll if it's quinacridone, it, that's, that's what the name is going to be on the paint bottle. They wouldn't have named it something different. So adding a little bit of white here again. Okay, so I'm going to kind of blend that out. Kind of lost a lot of my yellow in here, so I might have to go back in and add a little bit of that, but just making sure if I don't have it dark enough, it won't it won't have any kind of contrast. So we just really need it these dark areas. Okay, it doesn't look like it's a golden color. It looks like it's a oil color or a, a uh, water color. Oh, okay. Newton. Yeah. So you're probably not going to find it in acrylics then. Yeah, I don't know if Windsor Newton makes it in a, an acrylic. Oh, my volume was turned down. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> gold because we kind of got a lot of blue going on here. Let's add a little bit more gold and then we'll start uh, putting in our dolphin and our splashies. So grabbing the white going in with some really bright white over here. Kind of where we want it to be the brightest. You could use zinc white if you wanted to for this too. I, I considered it but most of these areas are fairly solid, you know, where I'm seeing this, these reflections. So didn't think it was required to use zinc, but zinc's always nice to, especially in clouds and things like that. It can be a little softer than white, white that we're using here. So use a little bit of yellow, connect, uh, cadmium yellow. Maybe a little bit of our unbleached titanium. Kinda, since we used a little bit of that up in the sky. Let's see if we can get some of this in here. It may look too bright. Let's tone it down just a little bit with our blue-gray. Just slightly. We want it to be more on the yellow side, though, so we don't want to use that, lose that yellow. That blue-gray will just kind of... it down you don't want it to turn green though so just kind of watch that I mean I guess it could be green because it's the water but it's not it's not super green in this picture okay so we're seeing some splashy right here just gonna start to kind of indicate where that splash zone is by tapping a little bit in there some of this yellow and adding it a little bit on the side of our white highlights. We've already got a little bit out up here so it's not a new color.
grab some of that a little bit darker color here go this is that ultramarine blue and burnt umber color it's a little bit more on the brown side on this this one Just kind of getting this. And if you wanted to keep it even more simple, you could really just kind of do, um, you know, side to side with with your water. You don't have to even do this kind of choppy stuff. Just as long as you kind of do this part a little bit bigger than the as you go up here. Um, burnt sienna, a little bit of the yellow, Indian yellow, so we get that kind of gold color that we got up there. Get a little bit of water to my brush, maybe a little tiny bit of white just so it's a little bit more opaque. And let's use some of that because we don't have this color down here yet. So this is, we're going to go over some of our lighter colors areas and it'll show up so just in the some of these areas where we've put this kind of light blue in we can kind of tap some of this color on and it'll catch that it'll be light enough to kind of should be light enough to mm, don't want it right there that was our shadow area keep it in the light area a lot of it down here a lot of it down in here. This is ultramarine here. It's just it's kind of blending with what's on my brush. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop there, I think. Let's add a little bit more of the white with the little tiny bit of the yellow, but we really want it bright. Okay, I got a question about how much darker would you estimate the painting would get as it dries? It, it gets fairly dark. I mean, it, it really does change a lot. Um, with acrylics depends on the kind of acrylics you use some don't sw switch as much like the uh, oddly enough the cheaper ones don't have as much shift I've found as these heavy body acrylics do and I think it's because I've heard um, that it's because the um, the craft acrylics you know have more uh, more fillers so they're already kind of lightened by the fillers that they're that that have been added to the paint and um this heavy body acrylics are more pigmented so when the filler dries uh you're just left with pig you know much more pigment and there's less filler um less filler so more pigment is you know left when it dries versus you know there's a lot of the 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 fillers are kind of usually uh, kind of whited, like a mattifying agent, so it mats your color and it kind of lightens it. So, um, so the craft acrylics, you know, even when it dries, it's still going to have a lot more of that those lightening um, properties than the um, heavy body acrylics do. So, 
it can lighten a couple shades. One to two shades, depending on the color. Okay, so here's our splash zone. Just gonna tap, tap, tap a little bit of color. I'm gonna kind of flick up a little bit over here. And I think I'm gonna switch to my fan brush now. Grab some of that white that's got a little bit of the yellow in it. Um, and just kind of tap with the corner of it. And then once you zoom in right here, and so we can see what I'm doing, it'd be easier to see. There we go. Just kind of setting it down and scraping it up. I'm not really pulling it too much, but unless I want a big, you know, splash area. But kind of tapping it, keeping it in kind of this flat circle. It's like a flat oval almost area right here. Right there. And then let's go ahead and draw in our dolphin. This should be all dry now. So we can draw in our dolphin pretty easily. I'm going to use chalk. You could use whatever you want. Um, white hair. I think the white sh should show up. So our dolphin is going to take up most of this upper area. Let me see. It's like right if you split this in three so that the third was down here at the below. If you split it again, the body of the dolphin is going to be right smack dab right here. And it is, let's see, it's about a third of this. So if you kind of take that and kind of split it, the tail is going to be down here just above the water, or just above the sun, I mean. And then the, I'm definitely gonna need a color here. Let me, let me see, I might use a, I'll use my water soluble pencil here, maybe. I just don't want it to, no, I don't want to use that. I want to use something soft, because you don't want it to pull off the color of your, of your paint you can do that um okay so i want the tail to be right about here i think kind of just just if you go kind of there's our splash right if we kind of start at an angle and think about it coming up this way this is going to be the trajectory of our dolphin so we're going to put his tail right in here so as he's coming up this way he's his tail is coming out like that there and there and it's kind of a curved line and then you can just kind of follow that curve up and around and he's gonna be right in here you definitely can't see this at all let me see <laughs> I can find the color that shows up against this fortunately there will be a traceable yes there will okay there we go there's a little bit of orange hopefully that shows up so we're gonna do this right here long uh, arc right there and at the top it's going to kind of curve down and then the bottom of the tail it's pretty narrow right here it kind of comes out a little bit and yeah I definitely can't see this at all I mean no, we can see it some can you see yeah, it enough? A, a little bit okay I just feel like it's really but really again with the traceable they'll be able to do okay. it okay all right or they can just put their there. Well, no, I guess that wouldn't work. So you keep it fairly narrow right here. I'm going to do it on paper so you can just see it. And that way you can draw it yourself and then I'll do, I'll do it on the canvas. So here's our water splash, right? We're going to go up at an angle like this with our, with our trailing water that's going to go down into the water. Oops, there's our splash. Zoom out a little bit then. Um, it was off camera there. Okay, so then as it gets to kind of the edge of the splash zone right here, that's where our tail is going to start. So it's going to be like, mm, it's actually kind of coming out like this. And down like that. This side is a little bit wider than that side because of the perspective of the dolphin. 
So this side's closer to us. We're seeing more of that tail. So there's kind of an arc right here for the tail. And there's kind of this upside down kind of heart shape right here. And then the body of the dolphin is going to be, again, kind of follow that line there. It's going to go up and over. I'm trying to, you can see how I'm doing several like lines until I kind of find one that I really like. And then I sort of commit to it and darken it up. So there we go. It's kind of a little bit longer in the arc down here. So shorten up there, right? Then the body right here, it kind of comes out a little bit and then opens up. It's not like a perfect taper all the way down. It kind of comes out like that and then parallels this pretty closely. It starts to widen out right about here. And then this part is kind of flat. It get, So it gets more narrow over here. So it sort of flattens out right here a little bit. It's still curved, but it's not as drastic of a curve as the top. And then your nose is coming out like this. Then the top of his head is curving down into that. Make sure that this part is the widest on his body. So you want to kind of come up. Make sure that it's wider right there. And I feel like his nose is a little bit wonky here. There's a little bit of a curve right here. And then the flipper comes angles back right here. And then this one is sort of at a diagonal out this way. It's actually not very big because you're not seeing a whole lot of it because it's kind of in profile almost or in like the back side of it. Okay. This could come out a little bit more. Maybe like right in there. All right, so there's our basic dolphin shape. All right, so I wish I was doing that on the canvas at the time. But it didn't. So I'm gonna do it really quick here. It's a little funky. Don't want it that thick. I'm probably just gonna have to let me see if I can use this. Yeah. This kind of goes at an angle like this, so it's kind of slightly raised over here where it ends up. And then this should be kind of an arc right here, so it should be, it's a little flat right here, but then it kind of continues up and there we go flattens out right here and then comes down there and then it's kind of a rounded nose and this has got a little bit of a curve right there just slightly fin If this is the halfway mark, sort of where the uh, pectoral fin is, is that a 
fancy word there. I think that's the right term. Pectoral what? Fin. Yeah, I think it's a fin. It's not the dorsal fin. fin. Oh, I don't know. Now, Now I'm not sure. The one on the top? Is that the dorsal or the pectoral? I don't know. The pecs are like the chest. Chest, right? okay. They? So that's pectoral down here. Then. And the, and the one on the back why. is I a door. I'm trying to Cause, say. Because the door is on your back, so that would be a dorsal. Dorsal fin? Okay. See, I should have asked you first before I started spouting out these terms. I can't believe you didn't know where the door was. Okay, just trying to gonna get this shape just right. I don't want it to look funky. Because once we get the... Okay. I think that's pretty close. I don't know, this angle looks a little funky to me. I round it out a little bit more. Right there. Okay, and then anything you want to erase, you just kind of use your cloth and wipe off. The, the black part is a little bit less forgiving, but it will come off as well. Just don't rub too hard with it because it'll take off everything. All right, so I'm just going to kind of go slow and fill it in slowly. Um, let's see what color we want to use. Let's get more of this ultramarine blue. I think we're going to stick with that color, kind of the dark color that we use down here. Ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and burnt umber. Ooh, what brush did you pick up? Oh, we may have, I don't know. I, oh, this may be a two hour thing lesson tonight. Sorry, on. Oh, for sure, because well, it's seven already. Seven and a half hours. I didn't realize this was going to take so long. So, what brush did you grab? This is number two round. I'll go see if dinner's ready. Yeah, Courtney's making new dinner, so. <laughs> I like her already. I know. Okay. A lot of times I can kind of see the shape better once I start painting it in. If I kind of go slowly and sort of do the parts that I know I like and then... So this is Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine here. You want to take your time and do it right. Yeah, I am. Okay, just want to make sure. Yes, doctor. So while you're doing that, I'll flash up the Patreon there. Okay. Because uh, if you're not confident in drawing or sketching, you can get the uh, traceables on patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. Yes. And to support the channel on a $1 level, you get access to the traceables for not only this video, but all of the videos going back to February 2017. And you can get in there, you can download them as many as you want, as many times as you want. And it's just a little thank you and a support, and we really appreciate that. And then we also have the $5 level, which is the traceables plus access to a bonus video. And that bonus video, do we know what that's going to be this month? Yes, we're going to paint a bare landscape. Ooh. It's going to be kind of a mountain woodsy mountain with a, a bear kind of in silhouette. So should Very be fun. nice. Very nice. You just got finished doing a, a female portrait, which yeah. was amazing. That was a six hour total over two months. So there's that. And then $10 level is. Oh, and there's also a cornucopia from last year. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. That's one of my favorites. That I put it out already for fall decoration <laughs> nice <laughs> <laughs> and then the ten dollar level is the traceable and the bonus video plus access to a private facebook group where there's additional lessons taught on there uh, they do on a, thursdays on thursdays and also they she does polls and share other stuff so yeah 
and we say they get to pick the bonus video, so they oh, picked nice. it there. And well, actually, yeah, it, it didn't it didn't get number one. We're we're doing number one in the group, but it's it was on there. And just give it a shout out because it just rolled over since it's October second, right? So thank you to all the supporters of Patreon. You kept with us yet this month? Really appreciate it. All right, back to you. Mark's commercial break is over. <laughs> mm, I feel like the tail is too small. See, now I can see. Let's make it a little bit bigger. My brush is splitting on me. I need to get a new brush. So while she's being quiet, I'll remind Sorry, everybody no. <laughs> that uh, down below, he clicked the more below the video. It has a list of all the paint she's using and most of the brushes. And she's pulled out one, maybe two that were on the list. Then also links to uh, the brush guys. If you don't have all the brushes, you can check them out and use the code Angela Fine Art to get 5% off. Yes. And uh, we've heard great things about them. They've been wonderful uh, partners with us. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, great service and all that. And then also down further down is the links to social media, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Pinterest, all that good stuff. Actually, this should, this should curve. Okay, I see what where we're off right here. This should continue to curve down. So it was a little bit off right there. So this should be almost Let's see if I can get that off there there we go so this curve is going to continue down like that It's not all that long, the beak, the beak area here, or whatever. I think that's called the beak. Isn't it? Is it a nose? Like the bottlenose nose. dolphin? Okay. Yeah. Probably. I think octopus have a beak. Okay. <coughs> and birds. Need some blue here. Maybe a little bit, a little bit of that thalo. I'm going to try to mimic the sky color that's behind him. A little bit, so a little bit of the ultramarine, a little bit of that thalo, and some white, which I'm running out of again. I think we got his shape just about right. I don't know. It still looks a little bit funky, but the best we can do in the... We're just winging it tonight. We have what are we painting on Saturday? I'm trying to remember. Oh, Magnolia. That'll be fun. For a second there, I thought you were talking to me, but you're talking to yourself. Sorry. No, I, I was talking to you, but you weren't listening. So I was listening. I was oh, about okay. to say, and you cut oh. me off. Okay, sorry. How rude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, grabbing some more of the darker. So I put a little bit of the lighter blue there, but it was a little bit too light. So there we go. There's just a little bit of that blue from the sky kind of reflecting onto his back. Or her. Could be a girl. We don't know. It's not that obvious, so I don't want it super light. 
And then I'm going to put Grab some burnt umber here with the ultramine. May have to clean out our brush because it's got a lot of white in it now. But let's do the fin on the back here. Okay, I'm going to switch to a little bit smaller brush now just to make this a little bit easier. This is the two watt round. Boom, just like that. Mark likes his little. Oh, yeah. I'm happy. Because we had, I've started doing it during the Patreon bonus video, and people liked it. And so I was doing it in a couple of videos, but it was very manually intensive. Right. Having to change it every time she changed brushes. You had to type it in every time. Yep, exactly. And save it and then do it. And so now with this Dream Deck. Got a little gadget. It's, it's pre-programmed, so Press I just button. hit the button. Boom. Done. On, off. Nice. So fancy. Okay. Let's do this pan right here. Oh yeah, he's looking more like a dolphin now. I think it was the nose that was bothering me. I think I had the nose too high, so it wasn't it wasn't arcing all the way correctly. Oh, I could have made it a little bit more narrow right there, but oh well. you want to try drawing it yourself I would do it on paper that way you can you know work on it as much as you want you don't have to worry about erasing anything on your canvas because if you do make too many mistakes or you know erase too much you can have the problem of the paint underneath lifting it can happen even if you use a soft chalk so um, just practice on um, on paper and then Use the transfer paper to transfer it onto your canvas, and I have videos showing you how to do that. Uh, the drawing, uh, feather drawing video is probably the best one that shows how to transfer a drawing onto the canvas. So, with transfer graphite paper. And then the bottom, he's got a highlight from the sun. I'm going to go ahead and try to get that black off of there because I still am seeing a little bit of our outline. There you go. So let's use the angle brush. that off and see if I can just get a little dusting of this color underneath here. It's just going to be kind of right there. There's kind of a shadow where the fin is like right in here. So it's just going to go around like that a little bit. Just a little color. You can use a little bit of the burnt sienna just above it. Kind of around it. I'll give it that kind of golden glow, blend it in just a little bit. This tail has got quite a bit of the kind of gold color. Oops, I don't know what happened there. My tail uh, got a little 
funky there. Let's see if we can fix that. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to use this kind of yellow um, I've got the cadmium yellow and some of the burnt sienna in my brush and I do still have just a little bit of this gray so it's kind of a gray color and I'm going to use this angle brush and come down from the body over the top of the dolphin just a little bit Let's see that might be too too much and angle it down towards the water where we're splashing right so kind of just doing this and it does kind of pour off the tails so there's it's not a straight line it's kind of a curve so keep that in mind there's some of this color down in here with our splashies so we can kind of go around the side of it so I'm not sure if you're planning to do it but somebody has asked how would you do the kind of sun bokeh effect? Oh yeah, in the yeah. I did. Corner? I did bring um, bring out some color to try to do that. Okay, excellent. Oh, that might be too. So there's some that's kind of coming down from here from the fin, right? And some that's coming off the top of the flipper up here, or the kind of back trailing off. And we're just looking at the kind of shadow. This is not going to be all that we do here, obviously. We're just kind of trying to figure out what that shadow is. The bokeh would be you could use something like this uh, I've got a little bit of water I'm gonna just get a little bit of water on there tab it off and do a little bit of the thalo blue that's in the sky with my unbleached titanium here and it's pretty light but not not white, obviously, you know, so. And I'm gonna use a lot of water in there to just kind of keep it thin. You could use a little bit of glazing liquid if you wanted to, but we wanna kind of thin out that color a little bit. Okay, so can we get it worked in there? thin and then wipe most of it off you know so you don't have a ton of paint on there I'm just going to kind of set it down and twist it and it should be sort of see through so if you want to you could paint it in you know um, paint it in with that oct octagonal color there's actually another one that's kind of up here that you can't barely see that it's sort of a little bit bigger. You can use a yeah, bigger Yeah, that's one. pretty cool. Like that. And then there's one over the top of the dolphin also that's sort of this. You'd have to clean that out completely. It's sort of reddish gold. So we could use some of the... You just dribbled water quiet. almost in your lap there. Oh, I sure did. Wow. Good thing sure for the apron. Get it on the apron. canvas, did it? No, it didn't, fortunately. Do that. And then we need to, you know, we need the water in there so that it's kind of see through. So go squeeze out all that water on your canvas, but you just want your water over here thinned. 
or not squeeze out on the canvas, squeeze it out on your paper towel here. So you get most of that out of your brush, but it'll thin that color. And I'm just going to do the bokeh right over the top of it. his face too, if you want. See? Very lightly. You want it see throughy. So, and if you don't want that, you can leave it out, you know? If you. Very cool. Subtle tab it off so that it's yeah, not so some streaked. Let's grab our fan brush and we're gonna just splatter the heck out of this thing. Splatter, splatter. So no flowers, but definitely splatters. Splatters, yes, we got the splatters today. Grabbing some white and just a teeny tiny bit of yellow. Just get that yellow tint to it. Thin it out with water until it's kind of milky consistency. I'm going to tap right here, real close to the spray. If I have too much, oh, I'm seeing also that I missed, the, there's a reflection of this in the water down here, so I need to do kind of a, like a reflection of the thing there down in here. I'm seeing it now. So with the thinned out paint, I'm just going to kind of tap right there. So you're seeing this. And I'm going to use the angle brush. And that white and go in here and just a tiny bit of yellow in it. And add some of the white to my shadow area. So just going right on top of it, leaving a little bit of that shadow on the either side of of it and um, tapping like doing little dots in some areas so like in here it's kind of all kind of connected little dots off the back it's you're not seeing as much of the white but If you feel like it's too bright, you can kind of tap it with your finger. Yeah, you need to spray it. So let's splatter it so we get kind of that splatter effect and we can go in with our brush wherever we don't have the right splatters. So there's splatters all around him, kind of in a circle almost. So I'm going to just kind of tap with my finger, sort of splatter out around him. Kind of reminds me of the Atlanta Aquarium. Yeah, yeah, it does. That was amazing. We got to go to the Atlanta Aquarium again this summer, so that was super fun. If you're ever in Atlanta, definitely, definitely check that out. All right, now I'm going to use the edge of this brush and just kind of tap in around where I did the, the shadow color. And I may end up having to go in a little bit darker with that shadow color. It may not be dark enough. Yeah, let's go a little bit darker with our shadow color. I'm going to go a little bit more. Let's get the burnt umber, a little bit of that blue. And do a little bit of that. And maybe a little bit too dark, but a little bit of white with that and it'll be perfect. There we go. So let's use that. I'm just going to use, go ahead and use this fan brush since I've got it. It'll kind of help keep the edges a little bit soft. And just add a little bit of this color to our splash shadow. Tap it in underneath some of our shadow 
our uh, splashes and around the outside if needed. I've still got some lighter color on my brush here, so it's kind of picking up all these other colors that are going on around it. Let's grab some of the quinacridone and burnt sienna and add a little bit, just a little bit of that. Burnt, burnt umber with this. Add some of this down here. Clean that out. I'll switch back to that angle brush. Grab some white. Find a clean spot. And I need to kind of find this, define this little part where it comes down into the water right here. So kind of make that pretty bright right there. And then do this out the side. The side of the sound effects help. <laughs> Makes it more fun. I'm just having fun tonight. I swear I have not been drinking. That's what it matters, yeah. <laughs> I can't remember the last time you actually had a drink. I don't. Yeah, I just of the of the adult style. Bothers my stomach. Unless the uh, your iced tea is fermented. Yeah. Okay. Could have. They could have been. Could be. Who knows? Just in the mood tonight. That's all. All right. So just kind of going around here, uh, making sure we've got like a good like trail of connected water drops here through the clouds shadows through our water come back in here white and I'm seeing some dots that are kind of coming off the body up here so if we point the tip straight down we can kind of get some little circular dots with this brush and oh what one which one was that this is the angle brush Quarter inch? Quarter inch angle, yes. Did you not change it out? I didn't, no. Sorry. People are saying in chat how oh, awesome it looks and stuff like that. Oh, I was good. distracted. Thank you, guys. So, yeah, let's kind of trail down some little droplets down here, a little bit darker. Finding that it needs to be a little bit darker just to kind of see the contrast between the clouds and the water streaming off his body. Okay, grab some of that white. Do some up here. Just a couple kind of stray random ones. This down in here is pretty bright there. Lots of stray like little tabs right there. And then I'm going to go over my dark areas just kind of around them. Not all of them are going to be covered up all the way. We're going to see some really bright white in a couple areas so we just want to Make sure that's bright enough. And there is a, I'm seeing now, uh, there is a highlight on that fin too. It's on the inside of the body right here. That's what I'm seeing. I was like, what is that shape? There is the highlight of this fin that is just well just above where that one goes and it angles down this way so there's just like gonna just indicate where that one is right there you can even kind of do around it a little bit if you want to yeah there you go so you can kind of see that other fin there and then I'm gonna put a little bit of this a little bit more of that blue, light blue on the top. Again, just right in here. Where it curves. 
stars right there. What do you think? Uh, yeah. Let's do some blue in the water, in the water splashy too, just a little bit. It's this level of detail that people really do appreciate. That you take it to where it's good enough, and then you say, no, we're going further. <laughs> and people really like that. Good. So. I know sometimes I drive myself crazy because I'm like, I'm going to get it done in, two, in an hour and a half. And then, you know, three hours later, like, I can't do it. Somebody sent me, tagged me on a picture that was like the artist finishing line. And it was like, just a little bit more. And then it was like another finishing line. It was like, just one more <laughs> in color. You know, it's like. Almost done. Like, almost exactly. It was like that. It's like, <laughs> that's just too accurate, actually. So it was too funny. Okay. Oh, there's, okay. There's a kind of an arc right here that I missed. Okay. Oh, there's Scooter's obligatory. Yeah. Uh, I think your packing. alarm's going off. <laughs> yeah. He's like, <laughs> dinner time. <laughs> Feed the dog. <laughs> <laughs> all right i think i'm fairly happy with that i don't know i still feel like i'd fiddle with it for another hour probably but oh look what i did i got my hand in it i am on a winning streak tonight i swear <laughs> fortunately it's still wet enough i can just wipe it off my goodness all right, guys. Thanks for hanging in with me tonight for my all my craziness. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you try it. And share it with me on my social media, all that good stuff. Got all the links down in the description. And leave a thumbs up if you liked it. And come back to see us on Saturday. We'll be back. And then, like I said, we won't. We will be off all next week um, for my son getting married. So just trying to kind of plan that and. Less stress. <laughs> trying to, I was. Oh. We were gonna do it on Saturday, but anyhow, never mind. I'm not gonna go I into the I details forgot. of why. But do super chat. Okay. I'm Let so me hungry. sign it while I you're almost, doing that. Yeah, I almost forgot super chat. We had some great donations this evening. Thank you guys. We really do appreciate it, and I'm stalling because I'm trying to get to them. Trying to find them. Yeah. All right. So first was from Susan, and she says, I learned so much watching you work through your difficult moments and a painting. I also like that you are posting the different brushes as you use them. Good. Thank you, Angela, Mark, and Maud, Michael Ann. Aw. <clears throat> and then we had one from Sandra. No special message, but we really appreciate the donation. And one from Shirley, and she says, I could watch you paint all day, Angela. Congratulations on your son's upcoming wedding. Thank you. So Thank that's you. great. Thank you so much, everybody. Yeah, we're really excited for him. Courtney's awesome. We've gotten to know her this week and last week. She's been with us for a couple of weeks while Jordan's been working. So <laughs> she's putting up with us. It's been nice. <laughs> telling her i was kind of glad that it's worked out this way that we've kind of gotten to spend some time together get to know each other it's been fun she's a really fun sweet girl excited to have a girl in the family <laughs> three boys <laughs> not the only one anymore <laughs> so nice all right i'm adding these like little lines i noticed i started to do it with the you see the it looks like like foam on the top of the thing i don't know i, mm -hmm. I don't i probably didn't yeah, need to I do noticed. that but it Kind of looks cool. So, all right, let's my, just sign it. My stomach is noticing that too. All right, I'm done. Maybe I should start making noises like the dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I spelled my name wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's awesome, <laughs> Angla. Angla. <laughs> Happy birthday. Oh my lord. Hopefully I can make it through Saturday. Seriously, my <laughs> brain is not with me. That is great. That was awesome. There's the E in there this time. It's like, that doesn't look right. All right, guys. Whew, we made it. I can't believe it. That was tough, wasn't it? It was harder than I thought it was going to be. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. I think I made it harder on myself than it needed to be, but okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>